Okay, number two, we're asked to sketch a contour map of the function f of xy. Now, how do we get contour maps again? Well, what we do is we take our f of xy and set it equal to a constant, and we pick various choices of c. That gives us a curve in the xy plane, and then we draw them all on the same axes. So let's start off with, say, c equals negative 2. We're going to get x squared minus y squared equal negative 2. This is going to give us a hyperbola. To put it in standard form, we'll divide through by the negative 2 and rearrange some things. So we're going to get y squared over 2 minus x squared over 2 equals 1. And that's going to be hyperbola centered at the origin. It's going to open up and down because the y squared is the positive squared there. So that's what that's going to look like. Let's move on to c equal negative 1. I would get x squared minus y squared equals negative 1. Divide by negative 1 and rearrange things. I'm going to get y squared minus x squared is 1. And once again, that's another one of these hyperbolas. Let's look at c equals 0. I get x squared minus y squared equals 0. That means I get y squared equals x squared. So y equals plus or minus x. And what are those? Those are a pair of intersecting lines that go through the origin. If I look at c equals 1, I get x squared minus y squared equals 1. And that's going to give me a hyperbola that's going to open to the left and to the right. And c equals 2 x squared minus y squared equals 2. That's going to be a hyperbola. To put it in standard form, I'll divide everything by 2. And once again, that's a hyperbola that's going to open left and right. And so you can see, as, if, as I would plug in negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, they're all going to give me these hyperbolas. So any negative value of c is going to give me a hyperbola whose branch is open upwards and downwards. Any positive value of c is going to give me a hyperbola which opens to the left and to the right. And at c equals 0 itself, so really this is the trace in the xy plane, I get a pair of intersecting lines. So now what we're going to do is put them all together on one axis. So I'll draw the best I can using my tablet here. This isn't uh, it's, just, it's not stellar, but it's decent. So we'll go out two here, two here, two here, and two here. And I'm going to draw the negative values of C in red. So um, we have to imagine when we're graphing our hyperbola, we're going to be graphing for C equals 2, or C equals negative 2, y squared over 2 minus x squared over 2 equals 1. So we'd have to imagine our guiding rectangle here. I'm just going to dot it in very slightly. It's actually a square in this case. And the asymptotes go right through the center. Those asymptotes are going to be the xy trace here in a minute. We get that and so our hyperbola then opens this way and then downwards like so. Okay, so that's c equals negative 2. Now for c equals negative 1 I just have a smaller guiding square I'm going to dot that in. I still am going to have the same asymptotes. So it's going to come in like this. Like that. And here. The question you could ask yourself is, are these things going to actually overlap? Are they going to cross each other? Uh, I'll let you decide that. Now for the c equals 0, I'm going to make that blue. Well, I'll make that green, I guess. 
And we've actually already got those dotted in. Those are uh, those are the asymptotes here. Those are supposed to be lines. And then for the positive value of C, it's going to be x squared minus y squared equals 1. So I'm going to start out and open to the right and to the left now. And then for C equals 2, x squared over 2 minus y squared over 2 equals 1. And you get that. Okay? So typically what we'll do is we'll label the contours. Um, I don't want to muddy it even more than it already is. But uh, C equals negative 2 means if I slice this at 2 units below the z-axis, I'm getting this outermost hyperbola. As I move up and get closer to the xy plane, I get this hyperbola. When I'm actually on the xy plane, I get a pair of intersecting lines. Then as I move up 1 unit above the xy plane, I get hyperbola, and then I get a hyperbola. Okay, so as I go down, the branches of the hyperbolas get further apart. And as I come up and then keep going up, then the branches of the hyperbolas get farther and farther apart. Okay, so that's my best impression at a contour map uh, drawing on the tablet here. But hope, hopefully you get the idea. Well, to partially make up for my pitiful, uh, pitiful artistic attempt with the tablet to draw the contour map, what I've done is a little maple here to remind you what we're doing when we make a contour map. So this gray surface is the graph of z equals x squared minus y squared. It's called a hyperbolic paraboloid, and we'll talk more about him here in a week or so. The red plane is the plane z equals negative 2. So when we make a contour map, we're looking at slicing the surface at z equals negative 2 with that plane. And sure enough, if we do that, if we tilt this up, look at what we get. We get ourselves at hyperbola that we're promised from the algebra. So we can look both ways. There you go. So that's what the trace looks like in the plane z equals negative 2. Okay, if we move up and look at the c equals 0 cross section, so we're slicing it, then we're looking at really what's happening in the xy plane itself. You can see what we get are a pair of intersecting lines, just like we were promised. So if we look at that from different views. All right, so when we slice straight across, we can see that we just get a pair of intersecting lines at the origin. And if we move up to c equals 2 and slice this with the plane z equals 2, so now we're two units above the xy plane, sure enough, look what we get. When we slice that with that blue plane, we get that blue hyperbola. Okay, so just a reminder what a contour map means in terms of three dimensions. And that'll do it then for number two. All right, number three is sort of a brain teaser. Show that any show that the graph of any function y equals f of x can be thought of as a level curve of this function. So once again, level curve. We're going to set g of x y equal to a constant. Well, g of x y is the same as y equals f of x. Now. Well, i equals f of x is the same as y minus f of x equals 0. And so here's the idea right here, is if I let c equal 0, then the level curve g of x, y equals 0 is the same as the graph y equals f of x. And that's all there is to it. Now we're going to see this generalized later on in the chapter, uh, but this is one of our standard tricks. To understand three dimensions, we'll bring it back to two dimensions. To understand two dimensions, we'll bring it back to one dimension by looking at surfaces as being level surfaces or um, curves as being level curves. So that'll do it for number three.